Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview Everton versus Bournemouth. And for the third year in a row, this is a bit of a big game in terms of, you know, pressure. I mean, don't get me wrong, a couple of years ago, it was a much, much bigger game. And last season, it was the game that we really, really needed to win to get, you know, for our first home win. Um, but this year, after losing the first two Premier League games, it feels kind of big again. Yeah, and it would be nice to course correct, wouldn't it? And to get ourselves out of this sort of mini little rut we seem to have dug ourselves mm. into once again. And it is easy to forget that we are only actually two games into the Premier League season because, understandably, people are a bit upset. People are a bit worried. People are a bit worked up about the form, the manager, transfers, what's, you know, what's going to be next for us this season. Can we find a little bit of form? But this game is a chance for us to, and I'm going to use the Sean Dyche phrase here, change the story. Because mm. we can start our turnaround now. We can get back on form very early into the season. And in a month's time, we can be looking back going, oh, you know, we've we'll put a couple of results together now. We're doing all right. What were we also worried about a month ago? So let's start that now. Yeah, I think a, a win right now, um, obviously with three games in, three points on the table, things look a lot different, don't they? They would look a hell of a lot different having played a couple of decent teams to start the season. If Everton can win this game off the back of beating Doncaster and going into the next round of the um, of the Carabao Cup, people don't look at it as such a bad start. You know, they look at it and go, got through in the cup and have won and have started, you know, gotta win the Premier League before that international break. It's just that if we don't win and you got you do have that international break a couple of weeks and then you come back to Villa, that's where people look at it and go, oh my God, this is a horrendous start. Um, you know, and, and, and of course, as we're recording this now, recording this on Thursday, we don't know how the transfer deadline is going to play out ahead of this game. So we don't even know who we're going to have and who we're not going to have. Into, you know, right just right now um, available. So for me, it, it does feel like one of those games you just like... If we, don't get me wrong, if we didn't win, it would not heap pressure on, on Sean Dyche as in like he's going to be sacked. Just heap the natural pressure on of you haven't won in your first three games again and, and all that brings with it. Well, it escalates what we're already seeing, mm. doesn't it? I think you're saying because, like we're saying, people are already a bit worried. We've seen the fans obviously be disappointed with certain things, be disappointed with the manager's tactics, player performance. And it's a chance to get away from all of that. And you're right, it's not panic station straight away if we don't beat Bournemouth. Because we're three games into a 38-game season, there will be mm. a lot of chances to turn that around and to get points on the boards and to climb up the table. But why not start now? Why mm. let all that fester and grow and become bigger? Let's just get away from all of it right now. I think Sean Dyche made a really good point last Saturday when he spoke about why is it that we've gone back Again, you know, we finished the season really, really well. You know, I think we got 16 points out of the last 24, I think it is. So we f that's a third of our points in, in, in those last eight games. So we finished the season really, really strong. Um, and, he, you know, he said to himself, he said, why, are we, why have we climbed up the mountain? Obviously not to the top. But why have we climbed it? And now we find ourselves right at the bottom again. Like, what? what is that? What is that culture within the squad that has led, led us to be there? He doesn't obviously feel it's anything he's doing wrong or his coaching staff are doing wrong. He's asking that question. Why have we... Why do we... Why against Spurs did we look um, out of ideas straight away? Why did we look like we were just trying to keep the score down? Why did we look like we didn't want to play on the front foot? You're still going to lose the game. If they score goals, it's how you lose the game. You know, we went there last year to Spurs and we lost two one. But the the way we the way we played in that game gave a lot of people confidence. This time, everyone's like that was a disgrace, and obviously we've seen the scenes afterwards. Um, you know, with a handful of people at the train station. But but that's the kind of frustration I think many fans have got at the moment is why is it that other teams can go into a season and be like ready on day one. And of course, a lot of the time, that is like the bigger teams who have got loads of players and have got better quality. But why is it that we finished the season really well and we just don't look ready? And of course, we've had injuries. Why, you know, we need to ask that question. And I'm glad he's asked that question rather than rather than saying, well, oh, you know, it's this and that. He's put that on the players, I think. Yeah, well, statistically, Sean Dyche teams typically don't start the season that well. 
do the just the way it is when you look back at his records with Burnley and also at the start of last season as well. It's just the way it is, whether that's pre-season mm-hmm. training methods, whether it's an attitude thing, or is it something to do specifically with this crop of players? We don't know. Yeah. But surely, and you'd hope that Sean Dyche has some sort of idea. But this is a chance to course correct now. And if you've got three points out of your first three games, that's not the worst start in the world. Mm. No, it's not the way. It isn't the worst start in the world for a team like Everton, where we are with the squad players we've got. I don't think it is the worst thing. If it it has been a sort of, I know people have looked at the start and gone, oh, that. But I, Brighton are a good side and Spurs are a good side. But this is why the pressure does come on a team like a game like Bournemouth, because these are a club that you look at and go, Everton should be beating these. I know for a long time we probably thought like that about Brighton, and maybe that still is in some people's heads. But a, a team earns the right, obviously, by the way they play season on season, to, to look at them and go, oh, no, these are a good side. I still think, in terms of Bournemouth, they're not quite there yet. And I think by selling Solanke, they've took that step back, that goal scorer. Because, again, when you've got a goal scorer who scores 15 to 20 goals a season, that is the difference between... Finishing oh, around where we were last season to finishing maybe in the top half or even pushing pushing for Europe some teams. With that, that it really is the difference, having that one player. You know, we saw that when we had Lukaku. Not that Solanke's on Lukaku's level, but having that goal scorer who you could always knew was going to get. If he wasn't going to get a goal in one game, he's going to get a goal in the next. And that's huge. And they, they've obviously sold him. Um, they've brought in Evelson as his replacement. He's obviously... Only just come in, new to the Premier League, thrown straight in as well. So it might take him a little bit, bit of time. Hopefully, a little bit of time to settle. Um, so they've had to take that one step back. Now they've got the money for it, and they play a nice style of football. But you know, listen, they're undefeated in the two Premier League games so far. Went to Forest first game, got a draw. <clears throat> Probably should have beaten. Well, let's be honest, they should have beaten Newcastle last unfortunate, week. Unfortunately, yeah. the goal that was disallowed is. I mean, massively controversial. Most people who saw that would say that 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 should have been a goal. Just the 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 way the way you know where it's hit them and the way it's gone in really should have been a goal. So they've been really unfortunate. They're a team that when they came to Goodison last season, it was early days. They were playing a new style. The, the way they were playing out the back just it, it was it was fantastic for us. We 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 were all over it. But from that day on, they've really improved. They really t- they really believe in what they're doing. They, they really enjoyed the style of play and it does open teams up and they've got pace in wide areas and this this will be a tough game. One of the reasons being because there's so much expectation on it, but another reason is cuz they're a decent little side Bournemouth. They've created a, a really good uh, team there. I disagree slightly. They are they are a decent side and they've got dangerous players and you've just said yourself they're undefeated this season, which they are. But they also haven't won this yeah, season. Yeah, they're through yeah. two games. They've got two points more than us and if we beat them, we go above yeah. them. They are a decent side and they've got some decent attacking players and we do need to pay them attention. But I think, you know, we've seen last year at Goodison and I know they'd started slow and they were still learning under the new manager but we beat them quite comfortably last mm. year and they've just sold the star striker and they're learning to adapt around that you've said yourself the Brazilian lad they've brought in he's still adapting I think actually this is a game where we need to be brave mm. and our bravery in this game will be the difference maker not just in terms of how we approach the game and try and get on the front foot more which is what we're all calling yeah. for but to be brave in the team selection as well mm. Because I think that's the key thing, not just in terms of giving us a lift on the pitch, but giving the fans a lift because fans are doubting the manager and the manager can debate whether it's fair, whether it's justified and whether you know fans should have more faith in players like Michael Keane who haven't even necessarily underperformed that much compared to what was this season, mm. but still you know, fancy his name on the team sheet and they're shaking the boots, don't they? I think that's fair to say. But give the fans a lift. Just give give us something. Start NJ. Start yeah. Jake O'Brien. Give the fans something to give the fans less ammunition against the manager. I I think you should be brave in every home game. I really do. I think you should be, should be brave. I think it's one of the reasons why people are disappointed in Sean Dyche is that he started the season saying in that first game of the season people wanted to see the new signings whether they're ready or not. That's the mentality of every football fan, not Everton fans. Every football fan. You've brought new players in. I want to see them because the ones you're playing in, instead, we know everything about them. And you're absolutely right. And Michael Keane, who's been at the club 
for this long now. Yeah, listen, he has he been outrageously bad this season? No, but you're absolutely right. Jake O'Brien could come in and have exactly the same performance and we'll get exact, a completely different reaction because people will go, young lad, just signed, looked all right there, start of his journey as an Everton player, where Michael Keane, of course, there's so many negatives. And listen, Michael Keane isn't a bad person. He's not even no. a terrible footballer. It's just that when he plays, bad things just seem to happen. Or, you know, you can see seven in the first three games or whatever whatever it is, or you can't play in the front foot because he hasn't got the pace to mop up behind or whatever. You're absolutely right. We've seen Jack Harrison. We've seen Dwight McNeil. Why not put in that? You know, that's why Tuesday was so important, I think, getting those goals in the second half. You know, it doesn't matter whether you are playing the Doncaster. To see a player pick up the ball halfway into the opposition's half, spin the first point of contact, run past the second defender, and then squeeze it past the goalie and the post. For fans, that's what gets them excited. That's the bravery. That's what they'll turn up on Saturday wanting to see because it's something that is better than what we have seen so far. Don't get me wrong, if you've got like a really good player already in your team and this player comes in, like no one would be shouting for Jake O'Brien to be in the team if Jared Brantwaite's fit. Of course they wouldn't. You know what you're getting, even if Brantwaite had had a slow start or Tarkey had a slow start. You ain't calling for Jake O'Brien because you know what you've got there. But for someone like Ndai, he should be in the team because, as I said, we're sick of seeing that front four. We want that broken up. We know that hasn't given us. Now, that doesn't mean those four players aren't good fo good footballers. It just means... In it's the not working. It ain't working. Now, that might mean Dwight McNeil moves from one side to the other or moves central and Dai starts on the left and maybe he swaps over with Dwight, depending on how comfortable the game goes. You know, whatever that is... Um, but we need that breaking up. I think, you know, Jack Harrison, for me, would be probably the one who misses out because I just don't think he's done anything this season. So I know it's very early, but I just think he's the one where you go, I think. And, and but the problem is because he plays on the right, it's, it's, it's a difficult one for the manager, but you're absolutely right. Be brave. With bravery comes excitement because you are playing on, on that edge. It, bravery is like saying... Well, you've got a player who can do a job, but you know what? Look at his numbers, his tackling numbers. Die, you're like, look at his dribbling numbers. That's what you want to see. That's what Evertonians want to see, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. And look, you can't judge a Premier League player's ability off a performance against League Two team if that's no. all you've really seen him and if that's his first start in your team. But what you can judge is his playing style. You can mm. look at him as a player. What does he want to do on a football pitch? What's his style? Where does he want to go on the pitch and receive the ball? And all that from Endai for me was very positive. Especially, yeah. you mentioned the second half when he went out to the left a little bit more. I thought in the first half, although, you know, we obviously didn't score or make many chances. Right. When he was, yeah, or when he was behind the striker, mm. he, he was dropping into midfield. He was using both feet and he was getting it out his feet quickly. Mm. And I thought that's a positive footballer. And that's an advancement on what we're getting from Decore in that role. I think it's for someone like him. It's, it's not if he plays, it's where he plays. And I think there'll be a lot of people watching this who will agree with that. It's it, You should be looking to find a role for that lad, not not looking and going, well... Where does know, he fit into this team? Where does he fit in? Because you're right in the first half. He picked the ball up on the right and dribbled in, come inside, and then laid the pass back. And I think James Garner uh, had a shot deflected that just went over. He picks the ball up centrally for the goal. He puts a cross in from the from the right hand side, and I think um, for Beto, I think it was. Yeah. So this is a lad who should be in the side. You look at that talent and go, what have we got otherwise? I think <clears throat> we are far too conservative at home. We do. We win games one nil. You know, the the game against Bournemouth last year was a proper outlier because we scored three goals. Something has to give. And if you do that early and you bed players in early, everyone gets something out of it. The fans straight away can see that you, as a manager, he's like, he's trying something here. Sean Dyche will go, well, if he's not ready, he's not ready. Because he, look at like Lindstrom. On Tuesday night, we all looked at Lindstrom and gone, he's not ready. Yeah. We can see that. He's a little bit light. Physicality is going to be a problem. Um, where, can he adjust? And play wide when really want to play central. Not a hundred percent sure of that because of how fast wingers are in the Premier, uh, full backs are in the Premier League. But with Jai State away, you can go, yeah, because he's played in English football. You at least give him a go and say this lad can grow. 
into games. So brave and be and try and get us on the front foot. And then whoever's playing up front, they'll get more out of uh, you know the team by having someone like that who's got that connectivity. Who can progress with the ball? Who goes between the lines rather than the Corey being twenty yards behind them and 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 then sort of running when the ball goes up, running away, and then by the time it gets there, it's already back and and so, not having the ability to mm, just slide through a pass when yeah. the striker knocks it down from a yeah, header, absolutely. little things like that. Absolutely. So there's listen, there's changes to be made. Obviously, James Coleman's back, James Garner's back. They were both back in the week, so the manager can look at that. Probably, put, you know, we can. Uh, Ashley Young's back as well. So suddenly the squad looks a little bit thicker. You know, it's only the likes of Patterson, Jimitty, and Branthwaite now we're waiting for. Now, whether they're ready straight after the break, we don't know. Patterson, Patterson Branthwaite are both, and Jimitty have all had operations. That's more than just getting fit. That's healing time and, and how those different things, um, you know, uh, heal. So let's just have a look at Everton's team from obviously the game against Spurs. So, um, Obviously, we don't expect Roman Dixon to be in there. Uh, as I said, it's a toss of coin between Michael Keane and Jake O'Brien. But, the, I mean, obviously, ahead of that, the five there, the centre midfield's an interesting one, isn't it, because of Jake O'Brien. You know, Tim Irabunum's been, as, as, in both of his home games, been impressive. Um, Spurs game, I thought, passed them by a little bit. But, obviously, with James Garner coming back, would you, would you what would you look to do with, you know, with that position? I think it's an interesting one, and you're right about Eric Boonham. He didn't have the best game against Tottenham. I think him and Garnagay both suffered in that game because I don't think their partnership came very naturally mm. in that game. And obviously, we've only seen them play together on two occasions, yeah. and one was at home against Brighton. And that game changed when we went a man's arm yeah. as well. So it is hard to judge how they complement each other in terms of styles. Again, obviously against Doncaster, so you can't judge it fully. But I liked how him and James Garner complemented each other's styles mm. in that game. And I wouldn't be against seeing them start together again at the weekend. Even though, for me, Idrissa Garner Gay is the best midfielder at the club. Mm. Eric Burnham started the season well. He's in form. I think he deserves to stay in the team. And if the style isn't working, if they can't gel a partnership immediately, yeah. for me, it would be Garner Gay who comes for this game. Obviously, Eric Boonham's not going to be starting every game, and Garner yeah. Gay will need to be in this team a lot through the season because he is important. But what's interesting, I think, is is that Eric Boonham, from what we've seen of him so far, likes to get on the ball, likes to, you know, trying to drive forward the ball. I just wonder whether you could have a three, a flat three of. James Garner, Adisa Garner Gay, and in a, in a boom being a little, but being a little bit more in an advanced role, trying to push us on. And that means you've got a secure midfield then for and die to be almost in a floating role to do almost what he wants in many ways. Um, uh, you know, to uh, and someone, you know, if we start over on the right, let's say, then James Garner, then you would, you, you would be on the right hand side maybe can go over and fill, fill in, that in that gap when needs be and then the other two drop in and just give us that little bit of security i i think i think if that's that's something maybe they could work on because i think that's what most teams that have now that we don't have we play something slightly different so a lot of teams play four three three and it means the wide players are wide forwards we and then their midfielders will, will go over and fill in those spaces. You know what? They also have to make that work, don't they? They have full-backs. Yeah. Well, they have pace, yeah. but they have full-backs who push up and fill that space as No, well. of course they do. it, And, of course, that's how you make your team better, is everyone, everyone's pushing further ahead and, and getting the opposition on the back foot. So, um It'll be it'll be interesting to see what he goes with there. James, if you can, if you were not going to make too many, I think James Garner for me, I'd start him on the bench, just because he has come back and I think it was good yeah, that he got time. I think he, I'd, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rip things up straight away. Is this a Garner gay? Uh, I thought did well at Spurs last week in terms of like the tackles and the pressing and that kind of thing. So I'm not ready to go. Oh, we've got it because I think this is what happened last year when James Garner was in last year. Uh, it was like, oh, what? Let, who can we get out the side? And it was a dis, like, let's get the Disagana Gay is still a very important player. And of course, over the course of the season, you do want to transition out of that because of his age and be, you know, who knows if you get another contract. 
but right now let's just let's just see where we are but um let's have a little look at the Bournemouth side anyway to face uh, who faced sorry Newcastle last week we're very unfortunate not to win obviously um with um Semio and Tavernier on the wide edge Justin Clive here played just behind um Evan Ilson obviously there's a there's, they have got that structure of a of good attacking players and as I said they, they, these will be these will be um these will be a tough side because they have a set way of playing and it's the manager massively believes in it um and you know home and away they typically play that they know what they're trying to do all the time I think that's that's a that's a that's a very unique thing. It's something as Evertonians we haven't been used to for a what long style of having a style that you well, they I mean, have a football and philosophy. Yeah, don't that's you? what I'm saying. We 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 we're like we're like the uh, like the absolute opposite of of what Bournemouth are doing. So they they will be they will be a, a tough side. To yeah, beat. and um, Semenyo, who you've just uh, singled out as well. Yeah. I do you think he is a quality attacker? Yeah. And he is one actually that does have a bit of freedom to come inside mm. off the wing as well and sort of go where he wants. Because even though he is a natural forward, he plays out wide. But he's he's fast, he's strong, he's quite tricky for a lad that size as well. Mm. Uh, I think he had a great effort against Newcastle from outside the box. He hit the bar, and yeah. he is a dangerous one. And he's yeah. one who we're going to have to stay alert to and stay alert to his movement as yeah. well when he does try and come across the defence. And also a really good example of buying a player from a lower the lower league team based on the strengths and then giving them opportunities. Got the pace. And you know, runs well with the ball, and he's translated that with a little bit of time into being a really good, solid Premier League player who's, who's clearly their danger man at the moment. Um, and it goes to show you if you buy a type, if you buy someone who's got pace straight away, you there's no point buying players who haven't got pace. You can't add pace to a player, but you can all but you can always add technique, you can add the rest, can't you can yeah. add technique to a player who's got pace. So it's always better to buy someone who's got the bare ingredients. They paid like nine million quid for him. You know that should be the example for Evan. And they'll put, if someone wanted to buy him right now, you know the double, it's so treble, yeah, trebly, because he's got pace and he scores goals in the Premier League. That's massive. That's massive. Let's just look at uh, the head-to-head -head so far. It's very early in the season, obviously. Two games played. Uh, you know they've got two draws. They've scored two. An XG of three point five compared to our XG of uh 1.5 goals conceded seven by Everton and two by Palmer. So they've been a lot tighter and have created more chances than us in the two games. But yeah, I mean, you know, on on the base layer of it, the conceding less goals and they're making more chances yeah. and scoring more yeah. goals. But it's early on and numbers yeah, yeah. can change very easily no. at this point in the season. But that's 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 modern football. If you attack more you should you should be defending less. That's 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 how a lot of teams look at it now. It's risk and reward now. It's something we are almost like we do the opposite way. So or you know, we, we look to be tight, of course. We were brilliantly defensively last season. But that's by the whole team being tight. Where other other coaches don't look at it like that. They know that goals win games at the end of the day. Yeah, and we have to find that attack and output, don't we, to start winning our yeah. own games as we have to score mm. in the league. And you know, people argue whether it's a personnel issue, whether it's a tactical yeah. issue. Reality is, it's probably both. Yeah. Right now, we're limited to now. We can change the personnel because the transfer window is mm. still going on, and you know, hopefully, we are going to get a couple of additions. But mm. in the meantime, in the short term, let's change things tactically. Let's bring in Beto, who has obviously only been tested against Doncaster Rovers, but we've seen. It's a big call. I, I would, I'd go with him. Not even necessarily because of his performance against Doncaster, mm. because it's League Two. But Dom hasn't worked this year, and that's not like he's he's not missing chances. He's not missing chances, but his style, yeah, okay. stylistically, uh, you know, waiting for the long ball yeah, and yeah. trying to pick it up, it's not work. So change okay. it. Okay, fair play, fair play to you. There you go. Let us know. Do you agree with Jack? Are you, are you bringing better in for this game? Um, let me know this might be the only striker we have by, by Friday night let us know your thoughts in the comments section and if you want more great videos make sure to check out Toffee TV Premiere the link is in the description and the QR code is coming up on the screen now see you later